Subjects of Solid Being Simone, the King Corso, Historical Talk, as well as Connor Depressa and Neapolitan Mastino. I get doing. Hopefully, y'all having a blessed day. Yo, I'm gonna talk about Connie Corso as usual. But uh, I really want to say something. Like, really, I hope it, it gets driven in that, you know, breeders start taking or enthusiasts start taking responsibility. If you're going to breed the dog, breed for confirmation as well, but also breed for temperament. Temperament is very important in your course, or like on some real stuff. Because what I'm seeing now is dogs that are beautiful in structure, in nature, etc., but the temperament is trash. And this is because not the not the fault of you know of the the individual that has the dog or the custom you know the customers or the potential customers. It's the fault of the breeder because breeders are just breeding corsos just to breed corsos and they're not breeding corsos correctly. And this is going to be this is a serious problem. It's not going to be a serious problem. It's a serious problem. Bottom line, like yo, the true nature of a corso is. When a stranger approaches your dog, your dog is uneasy. Like on some real stuff. They don't like to be touched by strangers. So like you showing the dog, etc. You can train the dog to be touched. But usually, you know, it's considered as a fault or whatever if the dog acts up. And it shouldn't be because the Corso is a watchdog or protection dog, etc. Like this is the nature of the Corso. I don't really strongly believe in alternating the nature of the course or like on some real stuff, man. On some real stuff. Because this is what the breed is. You have a dog enthusiast and et cetera that bred other stuff to tone down the dog aggression, to tone down the aggression. Some dogs were super hot that they put, you know, like they added the boxer and some of them boxer crosses were super hot, like super hot. Un uncontrollably hot. And some were real, real, real mellow, like they are now, like, and it's not, and it's manifesting it, like, on some real stuff, like, on some real stuff. And then even with the American dogs, like the American bred dogs, and truthful, due to the fact that people wasn't taken seriously of their breeding programs, just breeding just to make money to sell pups, that the temperament aspect of the dog wasn't monitored or done correctly so now you got a lot of american dogs that are crappy not everybody's dogs like i said Derek dogs are pretty good and whoever is basically showing dogs that have the majority of the american lines in them or or that's working them and doing the right thing like their dogs are good other breeders it's like so so the backyard breeder you have to be careful you have to know of the selection of the puppy that you're selecting this puppy has to fit in your lifestyle. There's ways of picking puppies, like on some real stuff. What you need to do is get up with dog trainers. Like on some real stuff. You need to get up with dog trainers. Why? Because a dog trainer will better qualify to address the issue of your question. Like, yo, how do I pick up the puppy? What's the puppy that's right for me? So these people can give you an overall idea of what you're looking for. And how to select your puppy yourself like on some real stuff bottom line like on some real stuff and this stuff should be taught like oh yo like it should be taught it should be taught it should be taught it should be manifested i'm gonna try to do something we'll see what happens that's what i'm gonna say you know what i'm saying because again people are very skeptical of other people coming into their their yards etc and you're saying what puppy, in your opinion, is good and what's bad. You know, some real stuff. People will get offended about that. A lot of enthusiasts don't like to admit that their dogs don't cut the mustard on some real stuff. You know? And everybody doesn't breed, pure, I mean, a good corso. Everybody doesn't breed a good corso. Even the best of the breeders. Like, yo, there's going to be some type of flaw. But flaw and temperament is a liability waiting to happen. Like, on some real stuff. It's a liability waiting to happen like so with me saying that you have to be very careful and selective of the breed i mean not the breed but of the puppy that you're selecting on some real stuff and with loud noises if the dog is running away you know what i'm saying like i wouldn't suggest that go to a working home or or, or the, if the dog doesn't like to be handled or touched but then again like i said with the corso's personality Old old school dogs, I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Even though my dog was pretty much old school, but she selected me. 
She jumped right in my arms. So that was my dog from the gate, <laughs> like on some real stuff. I was ready to pick up a brindle puppy. She came to me, I was playing with her, et cetera. And there were some more puppies that were like, built like freight trains that Linda Salino had. And my pointed dog, she chased all of those dogs away and jumped in my arms, like on some real stuff. So she selected me, I took her on home. Like that was that, that was my dog. And she turned on that four months. I never had an issue far as training her, like on some real stuff. She picked up things quick, fast. I didn't have to train her in protection work because she turned on automatically in four months protecting me, like on some real stuff. She would, she, she would bite you. She would bite you. If I told her to get you, she would get you. Or she felt that you was a threat to me or herself, she would get you. Other than that, I'm saying that she was snapping at kids and all that other crazy stuff because she never did nothing like that. Very laid back and et cetera, like on some real stuff. I brought her up to schools and didn't have an issue with children or nothing like that. Like, ka -ka 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 -ka, like trying to chew, chew, chew. No, like none of that. None of that. None of that. Only so, problem I did have, which a lot of breeders also was talking about, is that when she was very excited about seeing me, she appeared. <laughs> Until she got older, that was nipped in the bud. But other than that, no problems. Like, yo, love the dog at that. A lot of dogs back in the day also, too, with certain corsos, they didn't take to their owners right away. It was like a window period, like a two-week window period. And once they bond to you and your family, those are your dogs for life. Secondhand ownership. Almost virtually impossible on some real stuff with the old school call souls. Like, yo, you couldn't. A lot of breeders had, and the dogs tried to murder the new owner. So now, if you wasn't a dog man, and you don't know how to, um, how can I say this in the more gentler or layman terms? Well, if you didn't know how to calm that situation down, you would get nailed. So, a lot of these breeders, you know what I'm saying, old time breeders, this is why they changed over to the new style Corso, because the new style Corso was much more gentler in nature. They wasn't out, they wasn't high sprung like the old school stuff, like Mike Satilli stuff. Mike Satilli stuff was really high sprung, high sprung, but overall good dogs. Even some imports that came over acted the same way. So those dogs were bred correctly. Like I said, the dogs of the day don't possess that type of behavior. Dogs are skittish about loud noises and et cetera. If I act aggressive to the dog, okay, the dog might try to protect itself, but it's not really in the dog, though. You know what I'm saying? Like on some real stuff. Now I got to agitate the dog or get physical with the dog to make the dog be in protection mode. And the dog, like I said, automatically should be on front and center. You know what I'm saying? So this is showing me that good corsos, right, with good temperaments aren't being bred. Like every dog doesn't cut the mustard to be bred, like on some real stuff. And breeders need to realize that. But you know what I'm saying? A lot of breeders don't care because it's not the aspect of the breeders about the money, like on some real stuff. Now you cry and scream about the backyard breeders, but like I said, the technique of the backyard breeders is like some of them um show enthusiasts like on some real stuff not everybody not everybody not everybody but there are some and yo like again man these dogs are being bred they're being produced and it's ruined the breed it's very detrimental to the breed these dogs like i said are not bad dogs the best dogs are the dogs that are trainable those dogs should be carried on and be bred properly. See, like I said, if it wasn't a money scheme with this thing and this thing was done much slower, the Corso would be a much better, sounder dog, like on some real stuff. Everybody Corso pretty much would be doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now, everybody cannot own a Connie Corso. The Connie Corso is not to be meant to be a lap dog on some real stuff. They're not. They're not. And if you have a lap dog Connie Corso, then probably nine times out of ten, you have a hybrid dog and your dog is probably mixed with some box or bull mastiff and it probably looks like that, like on some real stuff. 
Now, I'm talking about the schizophrenia or the fear biting type of situation. Because even with American core souls, if you're not selecting the best of the best, everybody dog produces some type of flaw, even with temperament. So it's up to the breeder to see this. And then if you you gotta you, you gotta do two things, man. Either you're keeping that puppy for yourself so this way it doesn't get pushed through the puglet, or you're calling out the dog, like on some real stuff. Or you're giving that dog to a pet home that you damn sure that it's not gonna be bred and that you know what I'm saying it's not gonna be detrimental to the to the public. This person knows how to deal with problem solving when they come to dogs, like on some real stuff. Like on some real stuff. See, that's all I'm saying. Dog breeding takes a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of responsibility to dog breeding. Like, yo, it's just not you just breed dogs and you make puppies and you sell them and that's that. Like, it doesn't, that's not the gist of everything, man. There's more to it than that. So this is, like I said, you need to speak to men like Hercules Garvin, Marquise, um, um, Ty Nero. Carlos Colon, you need to speak to dudes like that. This is why I want to do the interview so bad because, like, yo, the stuff they have on cap, it needs to be addressed and need to be said, man. Because a lot of things that, again, as dog men, they know and they can aid the public, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they think was like, yo, it's all about the money anyway and nobody's going to listen. But the truth of the matter is that a lot of us do look up to these dudes, you know what I'm saying? And I think that a lot of people would listen, you know what I'm saying? And if it gets kind of keep, 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 keep being pushed, people will get the message and people will start doing the right thing by the breed, like on some real stuff. Like, the temperament is very crucial to the call, so, man. It shows and proves what you have, like on some real stuff, man. On some real stuff. It's because your dog looks good and that temperament is off, like, there's, there's an issue with that. And there should be a strong issue with that. Like, you shouldn't be trying to breed dog to dog just all the time, man. Like, yo, like I said, understand the craft, man. Dog breeding, it, it takes skill, man. And a lot of you don't even show enthusiasts. You don't have the skills to do so, man. And, like, again, to understand the legits of it, my thing to you is, yo, speak to Derek Masto, like, on some real stuff. Found the breeder. Very knowledgeable about the breed, very knowledgeable about other breeds, and he could break that thing down to you in layman terms. Be respectful. Don Machetti, same situation. Be respectful. Found the breeder. Mike Satilli. Ask him. Be respectful. Oh, he's a clown. He's a fraud. He's this. He's that. Like, yo, be respectful. Oh, this dude is on the bad breeders list. He breed better dogs than everyone. And he's on the bad breeders list, though. Like, yo, come on, man. Like, you, you can't. That's insane. That's insane. For you to sponsor and you to co-sign something like that, insane. Insane. So that means that, to me, anybody that sponsored that, you a puppy miller, man. And I got to be careful of you. Like, on some real stuff, man. On some real stuff. This because Derek breeding better dogs than you. You know what I'm saying? And you're on some jealous situation. What you gotta do is just breed better dogs, man. And then you knock him out the box, like on some real stuff. Like, cause your dogs are better. Don't be hating and slandering when you yourself don't know what the hell you're talking about. Like on some real stuff. Like it is what it is though, man. Cause a lot of enthusiasts don't know the breed at all. You know, we assume we do this and we do that and we don't know. And again, again, and again, and again, the temperament aspect Confirmation is very important and it's supposed to be a hereby. Color coat with me, the situation is I don't care, I care less. Like on some real stuff. You already know how I feel. I don't need to stress that. It is what it is, and that's that. Like, but anything else of the standard in that spectrum should be regarded. Like on some real stuff. Hold on for a second, let me do the part two.